Hey y'all, welcome back. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining the channel. Glad, hope you're all well. Um, what are we at now? We're at day five of the Ukrainian conflict with the Russia. Just hoping everybody's okay there. I hope uh, my Ukrainian viewers, if I have any, I hope they're all safe and uh, doing well and uh, hang in there. It's worth the fight. So anyways, um, this was dropped off by one of my clients. It is a Sony, yeah, Sony D STR DE925. Uh, I think he picked this up somewhere on the cheap. I think he, I don't know if it was uh, online or in a Goodwill store or something, but he said it doesn't work. So let's try this out. And I have a feeling I already know what's wrong with it because I've been peeking down be be through the grill and I can see something already that really caught my eye. So let's turn this on. Oh. I heard a relay click. Let's try that again. A couple lights here. Light here, no display. I have a light. Oh, it shut down again. So we do have power. It is just not getting. Try that again. Shut it off. Turn it back on. Couple clicks. And that's it. Okay, uh, like I said, I think I already have a feeling I know what's wrong here because I've been peeking down inside the grill here and I can see one fuse is blown. I can see it already. I'm gonna take the lid off to see that. Um, so he just wants it fixed up. He wants this for a garage amplifier or garage receiver. It's kind of overkill for that, I think. I don't know how many watts this thing is, but it's got all those uh, useless features, all this surround sound crap and sound field on off, sound field, and we can pick what kind of theater we want to listen to in and all this garbage that nobody ever uses. Um, and let's have a look at the back. It's got video functions as well. So we have a massive connectors. It's all RCA inputs and composite video. Really dated in this day and age. What has it got here for speakers? Two sets of front speakers. A and B. And then it's got a rear set of speakers and a center speaker. So this is what a... I don't know what they consider that. Oh, it's got a switch for input impedance, impedance speaker impedance. So it has some kind of... Switching for the power amplifier. Wireless rear speaker. I don't know what that's for. Woofer outputs. And then it's got a built-in tuner. Digital inputs. Optical, 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 optical. It's, it's really a nicely, uh, nicely uh, fitted out for a receiver. Let's see if we can get the lid off. I gotta take these side screws out as well. I did hear something rattling around inside and a little pebble just fell out, which is interesting. Now another thing, oh, let me get this done first. Now it is quite a heavy unit, so that to me translates into horsepower. So it must have a lot of
Okay. So yeah, this is that fuse I was talking about is blown. It's right off the power transformer. One, two, three, four. And there's another fuse here that looks intact. There's another fuse here that looks intact. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Okay, so we're in a big massive power transformer. Size of my head. You can see the big copper windings in there, they're pretty thick. You can see that quite a bit of copper here. It's a really nice low impedance transformer. It's equates to high high current, high power. Power supply board here has got a standby, standby uh, transformer, relay. Everything is working on this board as far as I know. Uh, power supply, a bridge rectifier and our caps, 10,000 microfarad at 71 volts. Yeah. And we got more power supply stuff back here. This is probably our um, plus minus 15 or whatever they're using for tuner and preamps and uh, there's a relay uh, relays for the speaker switching. Nice huge power uh, heat sink. Uh, what are we using for output pairs? We're using the M MN 2488s and MP 1620s. These are Darlington, Darlington outputs. And there's two here, two here, two underneath, two underneath. So there's, no, there's five of them. There's five pairs. So we've got five amplifiers running. Uh, got all our, we've got some power ICs here, but they're not heat synced. I wonder what those are for. Might be for signal switching, but they wouldn't be power ICs. I wonder if they're using those as drivers for the uh, output pairs. And a few, a few boards here. We've got a video board on top, I think. No, video board down here. Video cable. There's our tuner. Some kind of board here that's all shielded. This is probably Syscon. It's all shielded. Yeah, it looks like system control. Okay, so we've got a blown fuse, and that's a clue as to what's going on. I have, I think we have probably a shorted power amplifier um, output pair. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to take this outside and blow all the dust out of it. It's quite dusty. So other than that, I'm going to be on the lookout for crack solders. This is probably prime, prime for crack solders. You probably have them all over the place. If I look, I'll find them. Uh, another thing this... I noticed is it has no feet so I'm gonna probably put some just some little feet on here I'm not gonna go for the original look of having big fat wide feet I'll just go for little ones um, you can buy the some pretty nice looking handsome uh, brushed aluminum um, matching black feet you can buy them on Aliexpress but they're not that cheap they're probably about 10 or 15 dollars for a set of four which is okay, I guess, if you're just looking for one set. But I think uh, we'll just go with regular ones. And uh, we're not too concerned about the look of this. It's going to be in the garage anyway. All right, take the bottom plate off. It's probably a half plate, but it covers most of what I need to access here, except for this power supply that's over here. So uh, I'm looking at this. I'm wondering what the hell they're doing here. It looks like they're doing uh, signal switching and preamplifier over here. And then there's those three um, power IC chips. Looks like there's a little bit of heat, heat scorching here, not too bad. And then they're using a jumper board run from here to here. And I think they're bringing three channels across. You got three sets of wires. And this is probably, probably doing uh, Amplifier driver over here, and then this is these are the output devices. Doesn't look like there's any drivers here, but then we have Darlington's, right? So uh, let's see if we can pull this off. These are prime for crack connectors and stuff. It doesn't look like they're cracked at the moment, but I'll give them scrutiny. So 
um, we have blown outputs. So, or blown, uh, blown transistors, I'm assuming. So let's have a look at this. Now, let's do this. That doesn't really look normal. It looks like, uh, maybe. Okay. Everything's looking good so far. Everything looks good on those. Let's try these ones as well. Okay, everything's good so far. Nothing that's really jumping out at me. And I'm looking here, there is cracks on this transistor. The soldering's really weak on this thing. Look at this bodge here. They got a little diode tacked in there. I don't know what that's for. Let me have another look at this. good so far. Uh, what about up here? I got one crack there right in the center too. That's unusual. So far, everything's looking good. So why did that fuse blow? It looked like a hard short too, because of the way it, uh, here, I'll, pull, I'll pull this up so you can see it. It's a hard short because when it goes black like that on the inside, it took a high current. So it could be maybe the bridge rectifier. Let's, uh, let's pull this. Hmm. Eight amps too. That's quite the amount of current to make it pop like that. And the other fuse is blown as well. This is an 8 amp fuse. They're both gone on that side. Looks like they have two separate windings for the, um, the power amplifiers. You've got the red and the orange. 
these high power ones are 8 amp and these lower power ones are 4 amp. So I wonder what they're doing here. Okay, well, let me check that bridge. Maybe we have a dead bridge. It's not often we see that, but we'll go after that next. Bridge looks fine. Let's see if we have a short between ground and the rails. No short there. No short there. Or am I, no, I'm on the wrong. Okay. Let's go here. No short there. No short there. Okay. We got no dead shorts on the power supply or the, the load for the power supply. We got no shorts in transistors. I happen to, happen to think that one of these cracked solders maybe put the amplifier into heavy conduction and that's why the amp blew. So let me go over this and solder up some of this stuff that is cracked and then I will up here too and then I'll pop fuses in and we'll power it up and see what it does. So what can cause those fuses to blow? Those fuses are in line between the transformer and the bridge rectifier and power supply for this power amplifier. So there's a number of things that can cause those fuses to blow. A hard short in one of the output transistors can will take out the fuses. Um, anything that makes the amplifier go into full conduction, either positive or negative, will overload the uh, power supply and effectively the transistor turns on full and it acts like a short circuit and then the fuse goes. Now, what can cause the transistors to conduct full? Well, there's a number of things. It could be a cracked solder joint. It could be a defective driver chip. It could be a missing power supply voltage for one of these. Um, there's a lot of reasons why. So you have to go through and investigate. Um, typically, most commonly, you're gonna find cracked solders is gonna grenade your amplifier because when you lose either a supply voltage or a, uh, a biasing voltage or something to that effect that can cause one of these transistors to go in full conduction then pop it usually either pops a fuse or grenades the transistor and shorts it out which in turn can cause more damage back in the in the chain so i'm just going through and i'm looking and there is a lot of crack solders there was three voltage regulators here and this one here with the black around it was particularly bad so i soldered that one up and I'm just going through and looking at connectors now and um, and everything else that I can see that has any cracks on it. And I soldered these back up. There was one crack on one of these. Um, so hopefully we got lucky and we didn't uh, do a lot of damage here, replace a lot of parts. And um, all I got to do now, I think, is finish my inspection and soldering. And... Uh, Got these two boards to do and I also want to inspect this board back here which I have no access to I might have to remove it I might have to remove this remove this and uh, it would be a good idea to remove all these boards actually and just inspect them because I'm finding cracks usually when you find one crack somewhere there's more cracks light hiding and, and lurking so uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll get through this that one was a hard short
and this fuse opened because it was overloaded. See how it's clear? And it was near an overload and it popped open. This one probably popped first and this one popped second. This is a hard short. So first fuse pops, transistor is going to heavy conduction, second fuse pops. That's typically what happens, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Anybody else has any theories on that? And chime in and let me know. I'm interested in hearing your experiences too. So I'm just going to keep soldering here. All right, just working my way through all the circuit boards, and I think I found a problem. I removed this amplifier. You can see it's missing here. So I'm just going to go down. Now, um, look at this thing. This here connector. Which one is it now? This here is the speaker connector. This is the output for, <clears throat> let me check here. Yeah, this is the rear amplifier, I believe. Does it say on it? Yeah, rear amp. See, look at that. It's right here. Okay. Yuck. Getting crap all over my hands. All right, so this is the rear amplifier. Um, signal in speaker out power in and i think this is signal as well i'm not sure i'm not sure what this one is this could be protection protection here i think okay speaker out power in so have a look at these joints here i don't know if you can see these it probably won't focus they're all cracked and these are the power input pins So maybe that was the cause of what happened here. It had a uh, intermittent power feed and just kind of grenaded itself. But let's uh, solder these back up. I've been chucking caps too, and then for the most part they're all good. I'm not going to go crazy on replacing caps. I did a couple in the power supply section. Um, they were weak. They were on the uh, voltage regulators. Okay, this here, input. I still think the fault lies, oops, look at that, bridge that. I still think the fault lies on the uh, front amplifiers because those are the main ones and uh, I think the, they have the higher power. And uh, that seemed to be that seemed to be the main board and this is the rear. So I don't think this is the fault. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep looking and clean this up. Put it all back together and then uh, I'm going to keep going. All right, that's fixed. Let's, I'll just do this speaker outputs. All right, so a little ex explanation of what I did here. I resoldered most of this board, all the connections, quite a bit of it got resoldered, anything that I could reach anyway. Uh, I resoldered a lot on this board, these three chips here. Uh, a lot of the connectors got soldered, resoldered this. Um, put it all back together, reinstalled the rear amplifier, reinstalled the rear speakers. I'll put board, reinstalled the power supply in there. After I resoldered that, I put three new caps in there, resoldered this one, resoldered this one, uh, resoldered this board. This is for the tuner. I actually took the tuner out and inspected it, it looked good. Um, basically, all I haven't touched yet is the front panel electronics and the syscon and uh, volume control board. And then everything else has been worked over as far as uh, connections and 
crack solders. I don't think I left anything out here. So I only have a limited number of 8 amp fuses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install two 5 amp fuses. And we're going to power it up and see how she goes. I have a feeling it's just going to work. I don't think we got any more shorts. If we do, well, we'll go back to the drawing board. So new fuses are in. It's kind of chewed up here. It's not exposed yet. Okay, let's plug this in. We got a smoke show or we got what what's gonna happen? Okay. Power it up. Yep, look at that, eh? We got a serious fault. That's interesting, all those transistors are uh, checked out fine. Let's pull these fuses out. Okay, so let's try this again. Um, what I've done is I disconnected the rear amplifier, the power feed, and I'm going to replace it with 8 amp fuses. I have a feeling that rear amplifier is kaput. Okay, let's plug it in. Turn it on. And we have a working unit. We now have our display. Speakers, tuner, CD, phono. Okay, so the problem is that rear amplifier, we gotta take that rear amplifier back out again and uh, give it a careful look. I, I'm kind of embarrassed I didn't uh, find anything wrong with it. I tested those transistors on it and uh, everything looked fine, but obviously it isn't. So let's take that out again. All right, let's say I have a good look at this again. I got my meter here, you can see that. So. Apparently I have an open emitter resistor. I've got 7.6K on a 0.22 ohm resistor. This side reads normal. Now, I did check these again and they seem, look at that, that's loose. And uh, what do we have here? Okay, that's good that way, it's open, it's not shorted. None of these transistors are shorted. And that's normal, that's normal. Uh, let's see here, this is the driver. That could be suspect. Let me see here, how does this look? Yeah, look at that. Suspect, suspect. You gotta remember these are Darlingtons. So even though they test fine like this, they still could be shorted internally. So I guess the only way to tell is remove these three and test them out of circuit. Which we'll do right now. Now I have I did go after it with the solder sucker already. Let's try this. Wish I had some room here. Make some room.
is the NPN one. I hope you can see that. Testing is crap. It's no good. Okay. Let's pull the other one out. We're going to end up replacing both of these anyway, so I might as well just pull it out. It's funny though, it, it tests fine with the diode checker, but it doesn't test fine with the transistor checker. That's what threw me. Otherwise I would have had this fixed by now, but whatever. It's a learning experience, right? Put that in. Okay, here we go. Crap, it's no good. Okay, let's check this driver. This is a 2SD 2012. Let's see what this says. This one tested suspect on the This one tests good. MPN gain of 336. Tests fine. So let's replace this output pair and we'll get this thing back up and running. Before I get too carried away, I want to check some other parts here. I'm assuming this amplifier is fine because this is the one I found the blown uh, emitter resistors. So let's check this. Is that 180 ohms on that one? 180 ohms on that one. These are like fusible, fusible resistors. 180 there. And this one's dead. Okay. So I'll have to replace that one. This one here. It looks like. 1.5k. That's right. That's a capacitor. R 6.2k. Close enough. 22k. Oh, we got 2.3, but what is this? 2.7 here. 2.3. Those two in parallel. Yes, they are. Okay, that explains that. This one here is uh, 56, 560 ohms. Really? Shorted? Okay, 560. Um, that's pretty much it. Pretty sparse. Let's check these transistors. This one is an A988, 2SA988. It's good that way. Uh, do I got a diode drop across this? Let's see here. Should be okay. You might have to remove that and test it. Uh, 
That one's awfully high too. 701. Okay, that's all right. Capacitor. So I got to replace one of these. And we have a meta resistor here to replace and three transistors. And then I'll reassemble this. So a little trick on how to position these transistors because they have to match the holes, right? You just can't saw them to the board and then hope they match because they won't. You have to, so what I do is I just remove the board and flip it upside down, mount, mount it back with these screws so that the, uh, the holes are all drill, drilled symmetric. Okay, so that's anchored there. And then you just put the new transistors in the place where they should be and then position your board and everything should line up for you. And then you can start by tacking legs on one of the, one of the transistors. Make sure it's positioned right. It should be nice and square. And then we can just do the other transistors. Now they're positioned perfectly. And now I could even take this small transistor and position this. I should have done this beforehand, it would have been easier. Okay. Now I have to this is I have to eyeball this. So what I'll do is I'll remove the board and I'll mount that transistor the same height as this one and I'll make sure it's centered and then that should match the hole too. All right, so we've got everything back together. I have new transistors in there, new resistor in here, a new emitter resistor, and that's it. Um, got the speakers connected, power connected, and uh, what else? Oh yeah, the protect circuit connected. I do not have the input connected. I'm gonna go run this without a input to see. I wanna actually check the inputs um, to see what's being fed to those amplifiers. So let's uh, plug this in. And uh, last time we did this with this plugged in, it popped fuses, so let's try it. And we have our display up. Speakers. Okay, everything should be working now. If I dare plug that, uh, let's check this first. I'm not really sure which one is which. Okay. We had nine, minus 15 in dropping. It's actually going down to minus six. That's 59 volts there. 0.89. Negative 59 volts there. Plus 59 volts. We don't have a ground, do we? 119, 120 volts, 58, 58. Now, if that is an input, why would they be feeding it at 120 volts? That's not right. Negative 59, 
Yeah, there's no way that is a stereo. Let me check something. Okay, let's uh, look at these voltages on these chips. Uh, we've got three identical chips, they're all inserted the same way. So I'm just going to go pin to pin and I'm going to check voltages and they should all match. Okay, that's zero. Minus 3.2. Minus 3.5. This one's zero. Oh no, there it is. Okay. Didn't have a good connection. 1.4. Sixty. One point four. One point one. Okay. One point four. Sixty. Negative sixty. Okay. You know what? I'm beginning to think this chip is bad. All right, let's see here. Negative 59. Negative 59. Negative 59. Pretty much zero. 2.2. .2. Zero two point two two point three zero. Yeah, this chip is not zero. 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 Negative sixty. Negative sixty. Wow. Should be 60 volts here, 60 volts here, 60 volts here. There it is, okay. Point three six six. Yeah, that chip is definitely bad. And that's probably the chip that runs the rear amplifiers. Now, let me pull it out. All right, so what I did is I repaired the rear amplifier and uh, found out this is all working now. But the driver chip on the uh, pre-amplifier board Here's the driver chip. I don't have it here. The driver chip was completely fried. This driver chip was completely fried. This is a UPC 2581V. And I can buy these and, uh, you know, probably have it shipped to my door $10 for a chip. Um, you know, that plus the cost of the transistors I replaced and the other components. And I thought about it, why am I fixing a rear amplifier for a, a unit that's probably not even going to get used? So I talked to the owner, I says, you know what, you're just going to use this as a garage amplifier. Um, why repair the rear set of amplifiers if you're not going to end up using them? We have two sets of uh, outputs for the front amplifier. 
and uh, he agreed with me and says, yeah, just rip it out. So I just removed this rear amplifier because it's not used anyway. And we're going out to convert this just to a, a front amplifier receiver. Yeah, you know, like I said, he just all his intentions is to use it in his garage. He's not using surround sound anymore. So I, that's what I did. Took the amplifier out. Saved him a, a, lot, a lot of money too on parts because I'm not going to be repairing it. All I'm doing is getting the machine working again, which it is. It's working now. So uh, we can do a power test here. Have it turned on at the moment and we're set to CD and feeding it a thousand hertz tone so let's turn this thing up now this is rated at 110 watts per channel um, on all five channels that's a lot of power that's 550 watts total uh, I don't know if this little transformer would do 550 watts but uh, now that we removed the two rear amplifiers uh, I think it stands a better chance of at least doing better than 110 watts. So what I have now is I have the front and left front amplifiers, front and left, and then I have the center channel, which is still intact and still functioning and still connected. And we could use the center channel if we wanted to, but there's really no point. And that's a good thing if you have one of these receivers that have multiple channels and you have a blown channel, you can rob parts out of, out of one side to fix the other, right? Uh, in this case, you know, there's parts here that we're, we could use to fix the front if we needed. But anyways, let's do our power test. I have it hooked up to an 8 ohm load and uh, feeding it, like I said, a thousand hertz tone. So let's turn this thing up. Should be able to see it on the scope. And take it right up to clipping. Wow, right there. The left side is quite a bit different than the other side. I mean, even if we have a balance control that's out. Uh, left mix. What's going on here? Setup. Speaker setup. Yeah, this is why I don't like these. Sound field off, okay. Let me turn the surround off. Okay, I'm not, I don't know how to set the balance on this, even if it does have a balance adjustment, you have to f fight with a menu to find where it is, and then it's just silly. I don't know why they build these things. Okay, let's turn this up. We are scoping the left channel, so let's go with the left channel clipping. Take it up to clipping. And it starts clipping a little less before the right channel, so let's go right here. Right about there, I think we got clipping. And we are doing 34.0 volts. Yeah, that's a lot of power. This thing's got some beans behind it. So let this go for a while. Things are heating up fast. Oh, that is getting warm. I'm just going to let this go for a few minutes. Full power.
Okay, I left it on for about two, three minutes, and this is getting quite warm. This is really hot. I'm dumping a lot of power into my into my load, but uh, this thing's got some some beans behind it. I don't want to damage anything from excessive heat. So I think it's proved this point. It's working good. Okay, you know what? I went to go and read the manual about the balance control and it tells me there's one right here. I didn't even see it because it's blocked by this big knob here. So it, yeah, it wasn't set to zero or center. So now that I have it running, we can up this up to clipping and we should get equal clipping both channels, which we do, which is perfect. And uh, where is our power? Right about there. Yeah, we're getting... Oh, let's see, what are we getting? About 33 volts, 33.2 volts RMS on the output. Very, very capable receiver. It's got some, some jam behind it. So I'm going to wrap this up here. I'm going to send this back to the owner and he can now use it. And uh, should be the end of this one. Well, there you have it. It's all ready to go back to the owner. Uh, it's ready to go into grad service. It's going to be a nice, nice. Um, unit for having in a garage that's for sure i know i got myself a harman kardon h what is it a 550 vxi and that thing uh that thing can annoy the neighbors pretty good but this one will do better i think this one's got some got some muscle behind it so yeah it's a good good receiver at least she wrote for the that's it for today talk to you later and we'll see you on the next one thanks for for watching